Today I thought I'd speak just briefly about flashcards. I'm sure that all of you have used flashcards at some point in the past, and there are some ways in which flashcards can be really helpful, and other ways where they're just really not appropriate. So I have here a set of flashcards that I've made to study Chapter 8, which is on reactions. So flashcards, I think the very best thing about them is that they're a good way to get you to identify key terms from your chapter and from the lecture, and then to make use of short bursts of time to work on your studying. So a few seconds that you have before class, a few seconds when you're waiting for a friend or a relative, you can be studying small amounts rather than having to do all of your studying in large chunks of time. So flashcards overall are a good way to study really simple items that you could memorize, like vocabulary. So for more complex processes and concepts, they're not really as valuable. You're going to want to use other study tools for that. But for memorization, short items, uh, definitely for vocabulary, those bold terms in the chapter, bold terms from the lecture, then those types of things are ideal for studying using flashcards. And so which words are you going to include on your flashcards? Well, I would start with the textbook. I would look for the bold terms there. I would look at the bold terms in lecture, identify things that can be described or answered with a simple sentence, and then start to use flashcards. So I think the smaller the flashcards, the better, because you can carry them with you more conveniently. Uh, and then once you've selected a set of words, then you should write your definition after considering the way that the term was used in lecture, the way the term is used in the written part of the textbook itself, and then don't forget that textbook glossary, which is going to give you an official definition. So you want to make sure you're studying the right definitions in the right way for the material that we're covering in our course. So don't use the regular dictionary, use the glossary, and use the definitions that we've been using for biology use. So for example, here I have uh, thermal energy as an example. Notice that on my card I also include the chapter number. I've got potential energy, chemical energy, metabolism, which is the whole concept of that chapter. Here's catabolic pathway, anabolic pathway, and of course on the reverse I have the definitions. And notice they're short. They're just a few words, five or six words at most, short, simple definitions. So flashcards are best for super easy things, things that are going to be memorizing, not things that you need to spend a lot of time thinking about. So there are two ways, of course, that you can study flashcards. You might start out by looking at the terms and reciting to yourself a definition. So for kinetic energy, what's the definition of that? Well, it's the energy of movement. And yeah, I got it right. So I know that one. I could set it aside. So as you go through your cards, start out maybe studying one direction, and then make sure that you really now own the vocabulary. So turn your cards around, read the definitions, and see if you can come up with the word. So here I have the study of energy flow in living things. And I just made these flashcards, so I remember that this is bioenergetics. And yeah, it looks like I got that right. So I could set that one aside. Once I've gone through them both ways and I get that card correct every time, set it aside. Spend your time studying not what you know, but study what you don't know. So one other piece of advice that will help you to really use these terms, make them part of your own vocabulary as a science major, is to make a sentence with each one of those words. And so these, some of these ones you're going to have to make some kind of technical uh, sentences, but if you can use it in a sentence, then it's going to really help you to remember that word. So potential energy, maybe you remember, that's the not the energy of movement, but it's stored energy that has the potential for doing work. So I might say something like, the diver, after they have climbed the stairs of the diving board and they're standing on the top, that's when they have their maximum potential energy. But after they jump off the diving board, they're converting their potential energy to the energy of movement, which is kinetic energy. So there I just used two terms in one sentence. So make vocabulary cards. Make them the first day that we work on that topic in class so that you can be working your way through them and you're not going to have to study simple memorization right before the test. Those words are already going to be part of your science vocabulary.